Well, good afternoon and hello. Welcome to the Bee and Rose podcast. I believe this is episode 12. I'm here in my shed at the top of my garden, which is in Durham in the north of England, where I live with Mark, the husband, Sylvie B and Annabelle, our three girls, and our dog Roxy and our three-legged cat Ivy. And although we live in quite a nice area, it's not particularly rough, although sometimes you do get people shouting outside at half three in the morning, telling each other how much they hate them and they want to kill them. That's only ever happened once. Um, and our cat was actually shot. So yes, it's not rough, but the cat has got three legs because she was shot in the leg. Hmm. Maybe we should reevaluate what we are looking for from our house and estate. Anyway, if you haven't tuned in before, hello, welcome. And if you have tuned in before, I'm not really sure what you've come back for. Um, I don't think I'm going to get any less waffly this week than what I have been in previous weeks. So I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, um, you can find me in various places on the internet. I'm on a Ravelry, a Sylvie B, S Y L V I E B E A. I'm on Face Group, uh, Face Group. Facebook is B and Rose, B E A and Rose, and Instagram as B underscore and underscore Rose. If you have any questions about anything that you see on the podcast, oh, excuse me, then please get in touch via Facebook. I put a little kind of new topic up for every new video that I post, so there'll be there should be plenty of information there. But if not, give me a shout. So what have you been up to? I hope you've had a good week and done lots of nice things. Um, lots of different stuff's been going on here, but I'll tell you about that more at the end. The structure for today is going to be a bit different to what it normally is. I panicked that I wouldn't have any knitting to show you. <laughs> I don't think I needn't have done that. Uh, so I've got knitting, first of all. I've got a little bit of sewing to show you. Then at the end, I've done what I said I was going to do which makes a change and I've done a video of me dyeing some yarn um, I've dyed some lovely speckliness to show you um, and I'm going to go through that step by step uh, so if that's what you want to see I'll put a little box here that tells you what time you need to skip to if you don't want to listen to the waffly faffy bits but yeah I'll show you how I've dyed up this uh, so I hope you enjoy that and I'll just get all my uh, uh, mm, uh, uh, mm, uh, 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 out in one go because I do seem to be doing that a lot and I apologise about that profusely. So anyway, welcome to viewers old and new. Um, oh, there's always another one in there somewhere, isn't there? I wonder if anybody's taken in part in the... Nearly, nearly did it. Nearly did an um. I wonder if anybody's taken part in the have your yarn wishes granted thing that's been going around on instagram instagram oh man i'm not having a very good day today well i am but not where speech is concerned i feel like i just need to be knitting or reading a book in the living room in front of the fire instead of in my freezing cold shed <laughs> maybe i should do this in the morning i wonder if i should just switch the camera off and come back tomorrow but then i think maybe tomorrow i'd like to have a day where i don't get out my pajamas apart from when I have to take the kids to school. Maybe I think that I just want to kind of pull on a pair of trousers and be caught over the top of my nightie and take them to school and not do my hair or anything. Whereas if I want to do the podcast, I'd have to have a full shower, do my hair and do my makeup. And now I've already got all that on, I'm going to just do it now. I want the pictures in a couple of hours' time with my friends. So I'm ready. I am as ready as I'm going to be. I just need to be able to fuse my brain and my mouth together and speak properly. So, I do wonder if any of you have taken part in the have your yarn wishes granted thing from Instagram and Facebook. I said it right this time. Well, I did. I thought, ooh, I don't really feel comfortable asking for something for nothing. However, I did grant a few wishes, so I thought I'll give it a go. And do you know what? I'm absolutely over the moon. I had a lovely lady from Germany send me an advent calendar. I'm just going to show you and it's full of little packages like this she actually went to the shops mm, it smells it smells nice i wonder what it is she went to the shops. i think that's a tea bag and she bought loads of bits and pieces and she's wrapped every one of them up and she sent it to me all the way from germany can't believe it and there's some squidgy bits in there you know which i'm sure i will wonder what that is i don't have to wash too hard in case it has a, a soft inner <laughs> something so isn't that just lovely? I mean, come on. 
I've never had that happen before in my life. It's just amazing. Not even my friends do that. Friends are rubbish. What you need are yarny strangers to make your wishes come true. I'm really, really excited and really pleased. So that's very exciting. And yet when I opened it, I did. I cried. So I got that. And also, look at this. Look at this from Caroline. She sent me... I sent her a project bag, which seems really... I, I'm going to have to sneeze. I think I've got dust in my nose. It's always something, isn't there? There's always something I've got to whinge about when it comes to sneezing. Or oh, allergies in general. <sighs> Just get it out there. Look! She sent me a little kind of jute hessian bag thing and it's just full of yarn i think i don't know if there's 24 or 25 little packages to open so every day i'm going to be able to take part in the um the, the tea bags skeet posh ones i'm going to be able to take part in the various advent knit-alongs that are going on on tinternet because i have to say after uh oh there's another air cucumber oh mm. after um winding up 500 and odd minis to send out with the advent calendars that i sold to people for this for this christmas i just could not face doing anymore so i am so chuffed to have this thank you caroline i love it <laughs> it's just lovely i love it and then look at this as well honestly I'm thrilled to bits with this. I'm dying to cast it on, but I wanted to wait until I'd showed you, until I'd shown you on the podcast first. Um, Beehive Yarns. Oh, Beth, you're fabulous. Thank you so much. I put a shout out saying that I would love some Beehive Yarns. So I didn't want to just take it. I felt really wrong. So I sent her some of mine and she sent me some of hers. So I've got teal for the toes. And whatever little bits I fancy doing with that. And this is Song to the Sinner and Teal Appeal. And it's on Beehive Yarns Audrey Base. Which is 75% Superwash Merino and 25% Nylon. So it's sock yarn, isn't it, really? So I'll get a nifty pair of socks out of that. And I can't wait to cast on. If I've got time when I finish doing this today, I think I'll cast on. So I've got something to knit at the cinema. What are we going to see? Bad Mum's Christmas or something. So it should be quite funny. Not like the other abomination that we went to see last time. <laughs> it's a label, which is really nice as well. Just loads of care and it came wrapped in lovely tissue paper. I'm just thrilled to bits. See? Shy Burns getting out, eh? So I'm thrilled to bits with that. Mm. It's lovely, isn't it? I thought I could make that into some kind of woolen beard, but it was just the joke that died. Didn't really work, did it? Really, really happy. So thank you very much. And I will get that skinned up. ASAP so that I can knit some nifty socks and I'm not going to do a Christmas Eve cast on I probably will but I'm, all, I'm definitely going to do a Christmas Eve cast off I want something finished to wear on Christmas Day and it may well be those fancy socks which helps move on linking seamlessly into some finished objects which are kind of finished if I go like that and pull them up a bit at the front you're not going to be able to tell them they're not finished are you anyway Remember that gorgeous Cosmic Strings speckled yarn I showed you? Well, it's even more gorgeous as a pair of socks. However, my camera doesn't like to pick this up properly and it's making it look like it's got more white in it than what it actually has. Most of the white bits, let's see if I can get a close up so you can have a proper look at it. This is Temptation and I think there's some of this in their shop. It's um, merino nylon, 75-25, so perfect for socks. And just look at it. I've just done vanilla socks. I don't know why I've put them on here. It's going to stretch them out completely. Well, I do know why. Because I think they look better on sock blockers. But then I need to check myself. Because they only look better when they're a completed pair of socks. Not just a pair of tubes. Um, <clears throat> vanillas. Dead easy. I did these. I paid. I bought... Blah, blah, blah. I bought this from Be Inspired Fibres in Edinburgh and it was £24 so that's kind of what you would pay if you bought their yarn online and then had to pay postage and it's a lot it's a lot of money so I wanted to make something with it that with with the yarn that I would really really like and I'm right into my socks at the minute I've got the sock mojo is high I'm like a sock ninja that's what I tell myself so 2.25 higher higher sharps and I have the obligatory higher higher hole in my finger maybe we should have a higher higher hole club 
yeah i don't know about that really anyway yeah it's there and what happens if you put a plaster on it just doesn't work because instead of the needle going into your finger and just coming out again causing pain it goes into the plaster and it just gets stuck so at least when you're stabbing it into your own body you have like this fast reflex which makes you kind of pull the needle in the other direction whereas when it gets stuck in the plaster you're just like this and it adds seconds onto your sock knitting i tell you what and those seconds count so anyway i've given up with that and i've just coped with the hole um and oh and look the exactly the same so there's that like pooly bit on both of the socks in the same place yeah so i don't know what to do about the heels i don't know what to knit them with in of whatever i don't know what to do the heels with uh I might use one of my hand dyed by Kate minis in the dark red kind of colour. I think that would be nice. Or I might just use more of this because I've got plenty left. Anyway, I was feeling a bit crappy last week. So, foolishly, I went on to the Knit Cosmic into the Cosmic Strings shop. I wasn't foolish. I knew what I was doing completely. And I bought this. And it looks very vibrant when I'm looking at the camera and it is like that in real life it's beautiful and it is called Midnight Pansies and it's got a lot of heavy speckling going on isn't she lovely gorgeous I am so pleased with this I think that they, they must just do small batches of it and you know it was it's the most expensive yarn not expensive i hate that word it's like a value judgment expensive to me implies that something is oh that's a lot of money when in fact yeah it is a lot of money but it's not expensive for what it is it's just it's just a lot of money um i think it was 18 pounds and 50 pence but you know that's just what you pay sometimes isn't it and it's just beautiful i love it i really really do like it and i'll get a lot of pleasure from knitting that and i'm tempted to cast it on into another pair of socks but then i think oh, maybe i should just make a shawl that'd be a nice dotted race and then i could dye some charcoal yarn or something to go around the edge i don't know what do you think <sighs> socks or shawl i'm not sure we'll have to wait and see so yes there's that and then other than that, I have been uh, miraculously, considering how ill this made me last time I, I faffed with it, I've plucked out the tri tri trister, oh, sorry if that's not right, the Jennifer Steingast pattern that's in Lane magazine anyway, that I have showed you loads of times and I did it with a stick down the front. So I finished knitting, the body is done. The sleeves are done and luckily B doesn't have arms like a monkey. She's got quite, quite proportionate arms. So our bodies are quite in proportion. What? Our arms are quite in proportion with our body. I'm thrilled to say. Um, so last night I picked up stitches. Oh, you need to see it, don't you? Hang on a minute. That's better. Oh, then I get all the cack in at the side of my so side of my sewing room, you see. Whoops, the daisy. I picked up the stitches down the front for the steak. So, maybe before I go out, I don't know, I'll do a video of me cutting the stick on this sweater and I'll post it on Instagram. But I'm really excited because it's it's virtually finished. Um, I didn't really look at the instructions for the sleeves, I just knitted them. I just thought, I must knit these sleeves, I must knit these sleeves. And because the lope is really thick, it, it just came together really quickly. I don't think I've spent that many hours on this, actually. It hasn't taken that long not compared to the four ply or the jameson smith two ply jumper weight which is just taking forever it's not that bad and it's absolutely gorgeous she does complain a bit when i try it on her she kind of starts scratching her arms but marks and spencer's around the corner they've got some long sleeved thermal vests so what's oh, like got it's like got hair Ooh, maybe it's actually made from humans um so i'll pick up a long sleeve vest that she can wear underneath it and then if there is any complaining i would have shouted her a lot and condition her into not complaining about it pavlov you've got nothing on me with my children there we go super isn't it i love it i'm really looking forward to seeing it on and i think it'll go quite nicely with our new dress so brucey bonus two for one so yes that's nearly done and I feel like I'm flying through this, but um, what else can I say?
what else can I say? I don't know. I've also put a little bit more work into this. Oh, do you know what? I think I'll take this with me to the cinema tonight because I'm just done with the sleeves. Now, Sylvie, unlike B, is very tall and she has very long arms. Right, so shoulder, arm, arm, arm. I can't even get it in. Can't get it in. Basically, I lost the will to live. At this point where I thought, I'm going to start doing the ribbon, it'll fit her. I tried it on, she's like, no, I need at least another three inches. So I didn't un unpick the rib because I was just so fed up. <laughs> just terrible, that, isn't it? Um, I have no idea why I've got that bit of yellow in there. I think it was probably a progress marker so that I knew things were actually happening. But anyways, coming on, I will have this finished by next week and I will have photographs of my child wearing this even if I have to kill her and stuff her and put it on her cadaver. What am I talking about? Anyway, yeah, if that has to happen, it will because I'm so determined to get this finished. So I think she likes it though. She wanted it short and boxy because that's the fashion, isn't it? So I've done that and I'll block it nice and boxy and nice and big and um, it will fit our monkey arms quite nicely. I've got a little bit of stitching to do under the arms where I picked up the stitches and just left a big gaping wound. But I can get that sorted out easily enough with with a bit of needle and a bit of yarn, that's not a problem. So yeah, so that one's nearly done and I've got that. This is a bit of sewing I've been doing and you'll have to tell us what you think about it. I've got it in my quilted Christmas bag, so I made this from a bit of, I think it's Michael Miller Christmas fabric. I've done some free, some free motion embroidery on one of the Christmas trees. It's quilted, it's padded with a red bottom and it's nice and big it's got no extra pockets or anything in it um, but I'm just trying to get my confidence up where the zippers are concerned because I can put zippers in but I like my zippers to be really flat and not to have any kind of angles on the corners and I'm really really struggling with that so I've been practicing I've practiced with this one so let me know what you think do you like it or do you not and then I might do some to sell in the shop before Christmas I don't know we'll have to see um, and I am going quite fast, but I know that at the die bit at the end takes up quite a lot of time. So I don't want to kind of, I don't want you to run out of steam before you get to that bit, if you want to see that bit as well. And something else that I've put a little bit more time into. And I know it looks like I've, I'm showing you loads of stuff and I haven't spent very long on any of these things. And remember that essentially I am unemployed. So I've dyed club yarn this week, but I've incorporated that into the podcast. I've made one a baby carrier, which took one full day, but there are five days in the week when I am without children. So I've got the time at the minute, which is great. But at the same time, my brain is rotting, so it's not so good. And on Thursday, I went to a school experience called a school experience day um, that you can do if you're thinking about going into teaching which I'm thinking about doing. However, I'd have to be a history teacher. So that's the tricky bit, the history teacher bit. But when I went in, I spent a full day with history teachers at Shotton Hall Comprehensive School in County Durham, and it was brilliant. They were absolutely amazing. The kids were amazing. The teachers were great. The subject content was just brilliant. And I'm reading Ken Follett's Column of Fire at the minute, which is about Elizabeth I, and you've got your Catholic uprisings and all of this kind of stuff. And the lessons were actually about that. So I was like, oh, Ken, you've taught me so much. And I could relate to what was going on in the lessons. It was great because I can remember nothing from my history degree. It was just very boring until the third year, which was basically self-led study. But I would hate to think I was paying nine grand a year in fees for a course where you get five hours contact time a week. It was dire, really, anyway. And it didn't do me any good, did it? Unless I do loads of study again. But when you get to the point where you've got kids and you've already got a degree, um, but you can't get back into work because all you can find is stuff that pays minimum wage because you have no specific skills. And childcare for three kids every day and over the holidays costs as much as a day's work minimum wage basically if you factor in that you have to have a car to get anywhere uh yeah i can't remember what i'm waffling on about now 
Oh yeah, there's only certain things that you can do. You can go back to university and take out student finance, but it's for a limited range of subjects. So there's mental health nursing, which would be quite interesting, but Emma's dad was a mental health nurse and he ended up needing a mental health nurse. So I don't know, psychiatric nursing, isn't it? I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So yeah, basically I am unemployed. So I have a lot of time other than taking the dog for a walk. Housework still, oh, I do the minimum basically because I hate it. It's just like, why am I doing this when everybody's just gonna come in and wreck it again any minute now? So yeah. And if my shoulder wasn't bad, I'd probably be like a human knitting machine. I'd be on the television. I'd be getting awards for how much I can knit. So anyway, this is another thing that I've done a little, little bit with excuse me scratching my leg um this is tin can knits britannia i don't think i've shown you this before actually and i'm using a rowan felted tweed which is utterly splendid absolutely beautiful the amount of colors in there are just glow oh, i love it it's gorgeous it's so expensive which is obviously the downside of basically being unemployed i've got no money <laughs> never mind so i need some kind of job but one that's profitable, not just for the sake of it. Otherwise, you know, I've got too many hobbies and interests otherwise. Right, so. There we go. It's got a cable in the middle and it's got holy bits at the sides, which are lovely. And instead of having a rib border, it's just got a garter stitch border, which I really enjoy doing. And it's lovely and it feels great in this yarn. And this is for B, so I'm doing an adult size, adult medium, I think. And this is what it's meant to look like. Little chap, or chap it, I'm not sure. With the cables up the middle and the holes at the side. So yes, done a little bit on that. Don't really know what to say about that though, other than that I'm quite enjoying it. Uh, feels nice to knit on my higher, higher needles. Mm -hmm. So I'll have a bit more to say about that when I've done a bit more of it. And also, here's another one going to come out the bag. When will it all end? Two more bags on my chair, we'll see. I think I've showed you this though, haven't I? The flea cardigan, Loper. But if you're newly subscribed and you haven't seen that before, this before, there you go. You're welcome, isn't it? Beauty. Absolutely gorgeous. I've loved every second of this. I don't know how I'm gonna feel when it comes to doing the sleeves, mind you, but so far, so good. I've got to the bottom and I've stopped following the pattern. I have done some color work around the bottom. I'm not gonna do any rib. I'm gonna do a pico bind off, which I think will be really pretty in the yellow yarn. And then I'm just going to go and do the sleeves. I'm just going to do the sleeves. They're not going to be a problem. They're not going to call me any kind of anxiety or angst. I will simply do the sleeves. And then that will be finished as well. So I've got a lot that's kind of, that's getting there. But I don't want to fall down the sleeve trap of thinking, oh, I'm nearly finished. I've just got the sleeves to do because those sleeves are tricky little swines. And once you start, two years later, you can still be sitting and knitting the sleeve. So I don't want to get too carried away or too excited with the sleeve talk. No, nothing in there that you need to see. The other thing that I've done a tiny bit on since I showed you last time is my arboreal sweater. I was so excited by this and I thought, yeah, I'm going to do loads. However, I hit a bit of a snag. I put all of my stitches onto a bit of wool so I could try it off because my bountiful girth is greater than the length of my needle cable. Don't know which cable it is, but it's not as big as me. So, um, oh, it smells lovely. I don't know why. So, I tried it on. I thought, yeah, it's great around here, but it's not going to go under my arms. And I discovered that I was 50 stitches short. So, somehow... When I've been doing the increases in the colour work, I haven't done it properly, which is weird because the pattern is perfect. So, I'm not ripping it back because I'll never do it again. It's like a massive task. Um, and picking up all those stitches and dark coloured yarns is not going to happen. Not in my lifetime. So I've just added them on now, basically. This is where I need them. I don't need any more stitches around the top. That's fine. So I've just added them on and I'm going to knit about an inch after I've done them and then I'll try it on again, which is like a, a, a task in itself, threading all your stitches onto a bit of wool. And then, um, isn't the inside lovely? And then Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. 
I'll just get on stitching the 29 million miles of charcoal yarn into some kind of body shaped thing. <sighs> Happy days. So yes, I'm kind of at an interim point with the stuff that I've got on my needles, as I have been for ages. But I'm really close to being finished. I've started another mermaid sock, River Knits UK, Blueface Leicester, Mermaid Colourway. So hopefully that won't... Oh, I can take that to the pictures. Excellent. Job done. I'll put that in the front of the door so I don't forget. But you've seen that before, so nothing new there. Um, but new to me, I have... In my foggy haze of last week, I've bought some poly orange hand dye yarn. If you've never bought any, just do it now. It's absolutely stunning. There's loads of different colours in it and it's absolutely beautiful. It's just glorious. And I knew I'd like it. This was £15. Sock ply. What? Sock four ply. 200, 425 metres to 100 grams. 75 merino, 25 nylon. Ian, it's lovely. She's just got loads and loads of different colours in it. It's quite a high twist one, which is nice, but it's not all silky shiny like the other high twist I had that I wasn't keen on. So I'm really looking forward to using it. It's beautiful. And this one is called Diluted Wannabe. I'm not sure why. Maybe she has a colourway that is wannabe that isn't diluted. I don't know. But I'm really, really pleased with that. I'm really looking forward to using it greens and greys and blues and pinks and all the pretty lovely things joyous do you know what i wonder if that's it hang on um cosmic strings yes 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 school experience oh sewing i may be this dress do you want to come over here, love, and show us your frock? I've got pins in the back of it that I don't want to stick in. So this is from... Ugh. <laughs> this is useful, isn't it? Oh, this isn't going to work for you. Uh, basically, it's this pattern, which is simplicity pattern. It's just a bodice with a skirt attached to it. It's so easy. I bought this fabric. It's really cheap. Oh, I'm sorry. Just, you know, I'm doing that 1970s television presenter thing again, aren't I? I need to stop that. It's so inappropriate. Right, go away. Um, Simplicity 8294. And I can't find the packet with the picture on to show you. But it's just so easy. It's for B, so her torso is shorter than an adult's torso. So I haven't put a zip in it. All I do is I cut out a bodice. I haven't put any darts in this one though I normally do and then I've attached the skirt but with it being really cheap fabric by you can certainly tell and it's false economy I think to buy cheap fabric on purpose I just got this because she loved the design and it's what she wanted but it's fully lined because otherwise you can just see straight through it and it's horrible and it's only been washed once and it's started to wash out already so buy cheap buy twice which is painful when you have to sew twice as well. So that's what I've been sewing apart from the bag that I've showed you. And also, can you remember a while ago I showed you the fabric that my friend Vicky had made? Well, I dug it out because I'm meant to be making it into bags. I dug it out. I used fusible quilt padding so that I could do some quilted style freestyle embroidery in the pattern. Uh, on that side and then we've got oh, St Mary's Lighthouse at Whitley Bay on the other side and this is Tiny Mouth Priory which is the focus of this side so I thought I'd give it a go with doing a wide open zipper with a pouch with a zip that just comes right along but I'm not happy with that so I'm going to have to try some more and once I've got myself organised and I'm confident doing that then I think I'll make some to sell and I want to show you but I don't know where I've put it. Oh, here. Yeah. Now I'm going to. Oh, oh. I'm going to to ball up my beehive yarns, and what I use is this beastly thing here. Look at this. It's massive. And you know what? I can't remember what it's called. All of a sudden. Stenway, Stenman. Anyway, it's fabulous. It's really noisy. You attach to your table and it's just like it's just ostentatious basically in its bigness and loudness 
Um, it's not very fast at balling them, but oh, it is half neat. And I think I'm gonna have to regularly WD-40 to keep it in tip-top condition. Um, yeah, and it's got like dust on here from where the metal is grind grinding itself down. But it's fabulous. It, this was recommended on an American group. And I think I got it from eBay or Amazon and it was about £25. Whereas I've been using the Small Knit Pro Ball Winder. And it's just absolutely bloody useless. It's alright if you go slowly. But that's just, you know, when you've got a lot to do. You don't want to be faffing on going really slow. And if you want to pick up speed and make comedy noises, you need a bigger one. So I bought that. Um... And it's fantastic. So I'm going to go and do that now. And while I do that, you can enjoy watching me dye some yarn. Oh, I better show you the end results, hadn't I? This is it. So. This is the end result of the dyeing that you'll be watching. Which is uh, kind of, oops, dear me. Red, black and yellow speckles on a white base using my fabulous OXO cake duster. Sorry about this. Mm. But I can put a knot in but I can't get a knot out. Right. And the result that I've got hopefully it's exactly what I was looking for and hopefully you'll find it quite pleasing. See quite heavy speckling. And then on the other side, you've got quite heavy speckles. I don't even know if that's in focus. I'm sorry. So I try and... There, that's better. You see how I get lots of lovely speckles using that technique of using a, a, a thing that you're meant to put the uh, icing sugar on top of cakes with. Anyway, all will be revealed in the video. So I hope you enjoy it. And again, if you've got any questions, please ask in the Ravelry group. Um, yeah, and have a lovely evening. And thank you very much for tuning in. Oh, that was one of my calendars. Right, okay. Bye. I apologise in advance for how rough and ready this bit's going to be. But I'm not kind of a video whiz kid and I'm standing in my kitchen. And not only do I want to be able to film what I'm doing... I want to not be able to film how big in my kitchen is. So I'm probably just going to focus on the pan on the hob. Um, which is where everything happens. I've already got yarn soaking. I'll take you over to have a look, should I? Right, hang on. Ooh, Ooh banging into the tripod. See, rough and ready, eh? Never mind. Right. So I've got a pot here with um, eight skeins of yarn in it because that's all I need for this morning. So what I do to stop it all from dropping to bits is I just tie it with a bit of string or a bit of plastic or I've got some um, proper lock tie things but I can't find them. So what I've done this morning is I've just put a bit of sellotape around the top and I do, that's what I would normally do if I can't find anything else basically. I've cleared the kitchen of anything that could be contaminated by dye. So any open cartons or um, the toaster and the kettle, I've put a cloth over the top of them to do, do, uh, just so that no dye could get in them. Most of the dyes are okay, apart from the blue, it goes absolutely everywhere. So on the top of your cupboards, on the top of your shelves, everywhere. So you've got to be careful with that. And I've read that the majority of them aren't too poisonous nowadays, apart from the blue and the black, uh, which are well they get everywhere and I think they've still got heavy metals in them but I'm not 100% certain so I just take safety precautions anyway because I don't want to end up like black lung or what have you <laughs> it'll probably happen anyway but never mind so yeah I tie my yarn up and this morning I'm going to be doing eight skeins um I'll probably do five in one go and then three in the next so it'll all be completely different but never mind and I'll just show you how I do it Yes, yeah, so I, I better say as well, I've soaked them in a mixture of water and citric acid. I'm not scientific. I take the citric acid and if I've got eight skeins, I go and tip quite a bit in because I'm always scared that I haven't got enough. And at least I can rinse it out. And I just buy this from Amazon. I think it was about six pounds and it's lasted ages and I use it when I'm speckling as well. So there we go. Right, onwards and upwards.
Right, so what I'm going to do, oh, my screen tips took upside down. How annoying. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've packed, actually packed eight skeins into this one pan, which is a lot, but I'm doing speckling and I want a lot of white. Um, I've drained off most of the water. I'm just going to drain off a bit more. Obviously, I need some dampness underneath, but if it's too wet and I put the dye on, it will just, uh, the dye will just go everywhere. So I've turned the hob onto full. I've got loads of yarn in this and I'm speckling in it, but I want light speckles and I want, I'm going to use three different colours. So I've packed all of the yarn in. And if I don't have loads of yarn in, what I do is normally just kind of scrunch it all up into one corner or something so that I do get a lot of white patches after I've done the speckling. And I'm going to use my magic wand. Ooh, where's the lens? Hello. Which is this, oh hey, this isn't happening, is it? This little beauty. And it's a, a cookery aid. Can you see that? There. It's a cookery aid. It's something for sprinkling powders into sauces. And I think you buy them, it's an OXO. I got mine from Amazon. I think it's produced by OXO. But it's mint. I love it. And you see, you turn the handle and it like opens and closes. Hello. It's fabulous. Right, hang on. Right, I think that's a bit better angle, isn't it? I'll just put me binny on properly. So, I've got the oven on full, the hob on full. I've got loads and loads of yarn in my pot um, because I'm going to speckle it and I just want lots of white patches. I've got this here because once I've dyed it, um, once the dye's set, I'm going to pull it straight out into here. And what I'll have to do, because I'm doing so much in the pot at the same time, is I'll have to turn it over a few times so I'll get all of the sides coated. Otherwise, you know, otherwise you'd only have speckles on one side and that's a bit rubbish. So basically, although it's on the hob, and I've got a lot of heat at the bottom. I've hardly got any water in there. Although, look at, there's enough. It's still pretty wet. So I'm going to steam set it. So what I do is I use a really large old grey pan. I put it underneath. Um, and that will trap in the steam. And it's such a good size for this. I think I got this one at Sainsbury's. But first things for first, safety mask. I'm not going to wear gloves. That would just be like living a lie. I never put gloves on. Right, so that's quite warm now. Snazzy. Right, it's quite warm. So I'm going to use yellow, black, and red. I use a mixture of landscape dyes and I've got some colour craft dyes. The landscape dyes come with citric acid ready mixed. The colour craft ones don't, but that's just not a problem. So I'm going to do the red first. And I want some nice speckles. So I'll just go and ooh, I'll just go and grab my spoon. You just stay there and watching that pan boil. And for ventilation, I've got the back door open, which is just behind me. Did you ever think you'd be watching a video of a pan boiling on a hob? with nothing in it but wool. Right. So I put a bit of dye in, but I have no idea how to get that in front of the uh, camera thing. There you go, a little bit of dye in. And just to help with the speckles, even though it's ready mixed dye, get the lid back on. I've stuck a half a teaspoon of citric acid there as well. It just helps it spread about. And then I'll turn the magic handle and it closes up into this little globe thing. Can you get a better look now, I wonder? Yeah. There you go, it's great. And you can see the steam coming off. So, because of the way I've got it set up with lots of yarn in, not much water, I know that even if I put loads of this on, it's not going to go on much of the wool. So, here we go. Come on, focus camera. <gasps> I hope the lens doesn't get all steamy. That would be annoying, wouldn't it? Red. Can you see how this thing kind of um, spreads it out really nicely for speckles? So I've got a really dark patch here. I 
and then speckles everywhere else as well but not as dark. I'll put some more darker ones at the bottom as well. And while that sets, just tip that on it, I'm going to put a little bit of black on the top of the red. Not too much because I don't want it to be black. I want it to be light black speckles. But on this dark patch here, I put a bit more. Right, and then I'm not going to touch that. Apart from to get these bits out of the Why not? I hate it if I put a certain amount in, I end up using that amount. Can you see what I've done? Let's zoom in a bit. How slow is that zoom? Bring it on. So yeah, I've just speckled it all over. And now I need to leave it because if I was to put the yellow on now, it would just go yellow or brown, orange or brown. So lid on, temperature on full, camera off, I'm going to get a cup of coffee. So when I take this off, you'll see how much the black kind of develops when it's... See, it doesn't look like that when you first put it on because there are tiny specks of dye there that you can't actually see. But once it's been in the pan a little while, and um, yeah, and also when I said before about draining the water off, you got to leave some in because you don't want your yarn to burn. All I'm doing now is checking that the dye is actually set. Oh, it's not set there. Look, so I'm going to leave that in a little bit longer. I'm going to dip that under a bit because it's already kind of right. So I'm just going to leave that alone a bit longer and I guess this is the dark the joy of doing really small batches and not being like a mega popular dyer because I can faff on like this and it's all right if I had 200 skeins to dye I couldn't do this because it takes too long I mean you know pros and cons aren't there really you can see there's loads of white underneath which I'm pleased about I'm looking forward to getting this out and having a good look but no that bit there's not quite set yet but it's getting there. Prod it about a little bit so it gets more of the hot water on it. Also your water, to get the dice to set, it does need to be virtually boiling. It's gotta be really, really hot. I'll blast that a little bit more at that end. Um, can you see how I've got loads of white? That's just what I was after. I never have an exact plan. I always have a vague plan. I'll stick that over there. Because exact plans with dyeing yarn, unless you're like um, a seasoned pro and you do regular colorways, exact plans just kind of blow in the wind, basically. I'm just turning this over because I want the heat from the water. I know it's not gonna run everywhere anymore because it's, it's all basically set. Uh, I just want the heat from the water to kind of scald the top that I've just done to make sure that it's all as it should be. And when I finish and I've got all the colour on, what I will do is put them all in a big pan together with some hot water and just give them an, an extra scald because I hate the thought of anything I've done. That's funny, isn't it? Of the dye and anything that I've done running. I think it's a nightmare. I think the, the big thing with hand dye is if you don't wash it properly, i.e. if you don't hand wash it and look after it, you're going to lose colour. I've never ever managed to buy any, pop that back in for a bit, any hand dyed yarn that hasn't lost colour. Um, and if it's machine washed, if they just the colour comes out virtually straight away. I mean, there's probably some dyes out there that have got the magic touch, but... I have yet to meet them. Right. So I'm just going to switch this off and reorganise my pan because if I stick more dye on this now with having so many skeins in the pot, there's going to be lots of bits that get missed. So instead of using a teaspoon, I will be sensible and I will use my tongs. Whoops, chase more around the kitchen with these sometimes. Aha! Quite a good weapon right anyway yeah 
enough on that note i'll be back in a minute <laughs> actually i think i'll just leave it but i'll speed it up yeah i'm gonna put it back in now put the side up and no i haven't got asbestos fingers it just hurts i'm twisting the strands around a bit so i get good good repetent good you know good bit of the skin at the top and i'll just keep doing this so i'm happy with the distribution of those skeins we bit the tape out right and now i'm going to do it all over again this is my setup so i've got a towel here to protect the wrench um and i've just got all my stuff to hand and i can dry if i need to dry anything i've just got the towel right. and i think what i'm going to do i'm going to put a little bit more water in there so we've got so I know it's not going to burn dry or anything and I'll have a poke about to get it back down to the bottom so it's not sitting on the top. <clears throat> and I did the heavy line of red here last time so this time I think I'm going to do it in the middle. Just get that all jumbled up a bit. And this is why we don't have a fancy hub because I do stuff like this. I did have a nice ceramic one but it just went all to pot. I think I was using it too much. So I've got this 50 quid metallic thing and I hate it, it's disgusting. However, it does the job. And with having wooden benches, which are also wrecked, bleach does magic wonders. It's great. I need to have one. Right, whoops, back on the pot. Camera falling, camera falling. Okay, so same thing again. I'm going to pop some red in my little magic capsule, which is a bit damp, and that's no good. So I'm just going to put in, it's for eight skeins, which is quite significant. Drop that in there. So I've got the red dye and the citric acid in the little spoony thing, closing it in. Uh, uh, this doesn't need citric acid, it's landscape dye, but now the yarn's for hot, it'll strike faster. Right. I'm going to put more here on this bit. difficult to see because of the steam isn't it actually there does that help if I waft my hand over it a bit oh look it looks like a uh, meringues <laughs> wouldn't advise serving it for dinner like unless you want your guests to cart it right that's the red oh there's loads left Put a dark bit in the middle right and then again, I'm going to put some black on. Not as much this time, I don't think. I think I'm just going to do a light speckle and a black. So, put a bit in. I'm a bugger as well. If I've got stuff in this, in the, in my spoony thing, I don't know what else can I call it. In my speckle, in my very professional speckling tool, not in my spoony thing. Wash, wash. Um, I hate it if there's any left at the end, so I like just to use it all, which is a pain in the backside. So I've only put a little bit of black in. Right, let's go. I'll put some black over this dark bit again. And if you hold it up really high, you get better speckles. Just distribute it a bit better. Right, I'll put a lot over the red. See if there's any left. Ooh, a little bit. 
Fabulous, this thing. Right. That'll do. Lid on. Leave it again. I'm going to how to turn the camera off. Right. <coughs> Oven gloves on. Lid off. Oh, that's better. Have another poke about, make sure it's set. Oh, that's all right. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Right, more heat. Oh. Um, obviously, the more dye you put in, the longer it takes for the yarn to absorb it. So, especially when it's all packed in like this. Right, I'm sure if you're doing your own, you don't need to shove like eight skeins in the pot at the same time. Um, like I said, I'll just do that because I like the way that it makes the speckles work and I'm doing this because they're going to be sent out to customers. It's not all for me. I do like the way my camera can actually get light on me when I'm stood in front of the window though. That's pretty nifty. Um, and it's like a chin guard, isn't it? It's a fake beard. Uh, yeah, so... But even if I had less in the pan, I would scrunch them all really, really close together so that I would still get the same effect. So it doesn't really make any difference to me whether I've got two or eight, but it's a lot easier if I've got more because I don't have to control, control the environment that the yarn's sitting in. Um, you do get more steam though if you've got less because if you kind of like, if you scrunch it up like that, oh, let's do this again, this thing. If you scrunch it up, kind of. God, that's zoom is slow, isn't it? And it doesn't really seem to work. I would never make a good Nigella of wool, would I? See if you have it all scrunched up here. Oh, and it's at the other end. Arr. You can get water. You've got water exposed, I guess. So you do get a bit more steam. It takes a bit longer if your pan's packed. Right, so what I'm going to do now, probably burn my fingers. I'm just going to get me the clever tongs and um, mess around with this a bit to make sure it's all nice and set. And then, ow, steam burns, fun. And then I'm going to put a bit of yellow on, I think. So, see what I've got so far, yep. I'm happy with that. That'll be smashing when it's dry. So now, and like I said before, because I've got so many in, it just means that I've got a, more steps to go through. So it's not any faster for you them all in the pan together. Oh gosh. Um, it's just the effect that I want to get. You see, so right. So, what I think I'll do now is I'm going to twist them a little bit when I put them back in so that I've got different sides of the yarn in a different end of the pan because I'm going to put some yellow on. My yellow, this is the uh, colour craft dye and this needs to have citric acid added to it. <clears throat> Where be my spoon, I wonders? Oh, we've got it! <laughs> Don't know what that was. Right. Not too much. I've discovered that it's always better to add too little than too much and then go back and add more. So I've got yellow in there with a lovely little bit of citric acid, or not set, and the yarn's really hot, so... Oh, and it's all spelunky. It's satisfying. Obviously, if I put this on while... Um, oops, while the red was still wet, it would just have gone orange. I don't want orange, I want yellow. We'll still go a little bit orange, probably. I'm going to put a lot there and a lot here. With some colours, speckle much better than others. This one's kind of like 
doesn't really want to speckle it just wants to be like i'm here and i'm the boss it's all left in there and i think that's probably because i put too much citric acid in but then i can put loads on there because then it'll seep through to the other side and loads on there as well so as you can see it's not exactly oh i haven't got my mask on either which is really bad Right, it's so, alright, health and safety, I'm, I'm done. Um, and I'm going to put a tiny bit of black on the top there as well, but just a little bit. And this yarn is really hot now, so this will strike very quickly. More on where I've got the thicker pockets of uh, yellow dye. That'll be lovely. Right. Get the lid on. And that'll be nice and have lots of nice black bits in it by the time I've finished. All right. And that is basically that. There's not really oh, there's not really a lot more to it, really. But I'll keep going anyway. Oh. Um obviously once the colour's the way that I want it. Camera, what are you doing? You work so well before. Should I block the window out with my large head that's better uh once it's you've got the color the way you want it and you shear the lid set i like to just boil it up for it ages basically and then i'll leave it to cool in the pan so that it can go through all of the different it's totally not scientific i haven't got a clue this might be a load of rubbish but so that the dye can settle at all the different temperatures on the way down the scale um just to make sure that like i said before it's not gonna it's not gonna come out or, oh i'd hate that that would be an utter nightmare. Um, you know, you spend hours knitting your projects, you don't want them just to be wrecked or in sitting clear water and soap to get rid of the washing powder in case anybody's allergic to it and also get rid of the smell of it. Um, well, I tend to use them scented. And then just uh, rinse in water and maybe some wool soak or just nothing. And that's it really. Then I hang it out to dry. I look at it and think, oh, I wish I had more colour on it. And then I do it another three times or something until I'm actually satisfied. Then I dry it, skin it, post it out. Bobby's your uncle and Fanny's your aunt. Right, I'll be back later. So this is the kit and caboodle that I've got for dyeing. I've got pans here that I use quite a lot. A steamer, which is great. You can wrap your stuff in cellophane and steam it but my favorite is just dying on the hob using big metal pans it's the largest roasting tray i could buy in sainsbury's basically and it's great a towel that i put on the table on the bench beside where i'm doing the dyeing to catch the drips citric acid masks i've just been using these 3m masks 9322 they were recommended by somebody else um if i was doing any more or if i had loads of work to do i would buy a proper respirator Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that's that right, right, right. yeah now i can't speak at all rubber gloves that never ever come out with a thing because they make me hand so uncomfortable and then from when i first started i've got loads of kool-aid and um food gels <laughs> which is quite nice so at least the kids can play with them if they want to because i won't let them touch the hard stuff i've got dye solution that's already made up in these squidgy bottles which are useless because when you tip them over everything just comes out the side they're a bit cack I never did get any decent ones. And then here I've got the Colour Craft dyes, which I love. The colours are brilliant. Um, I picked these up at Yarndale. It was one of the reasons I went, because their postal service is crap. I think they're mainly a wholesale company. So if you try to buy smaller amounts online, it takes forever. Um, and I found it quite hard to get in touch with them via email. Facebook was better, but then face-to-face -face they were great. It was so much easier actually travelling 
to Yorkshire to buy them than what it was trying to get them over at Tintinet. Never mind, they come out really nice, but you have to mix them with citric acid. And I've got quite a few of theirs mixed in with, um, that's called acid milling dye. And I've also got landscape dyes, which are fabulous. I buy these from Wing and Wo Wing and Wold Works. They're an Australian brand, so I believe, and they come ready mixed, so they're ready to use. They're a bit more expensive, but not that much more expensive in the grand scheme of things. I do prefer the colour craft dyes. I think they are easier to use, although some of the landscape dyes split beautifully when you're trying to do speckling, which is always a good thing. Um, but they, they are quite hard to actually get to dissolve. Some of them are rubbish, but others are just absolutely brilliant. So it's just, you know, whatever really. Um, and I've got here an Ashford purple, which is stunning. I love that. But my favourite purple is the Colour Craft one because it is really, really strong. And then the Turquoise Colour Craft, you only need to use a tiny bit of it and it just goes forever. I think that'll last me till I'm about 90. Um, so yeah, we've got Colour Craft, we've got Landscape, and I also use Jackeye dye, Jackeye, Jacquard dye, either Acid dye or Procyon dye, um, which, this is great, you can use it with citric acid or vinegar, just the same as what you can with the, the Jacquard acid dye, so you don't have to discriminate about, there's, there's an acid dye, you can buy these on Amazon, and there's a Procyon dye, uh, but you can use them both the same way the benefit of the procyon dye is you can use it in cold water for things like silk um or man-made fibers whereas the acid dye is just for protein fibers yeah oh, hang on that's wrong yeah the acid dye is just for protein fibers like fi like wool I mean, I think you can dye silk with it can't you silk wool feathers and nylon yes of course you can because the animal fibers aren't you so if you were dyeing cotton or maybe flax or something, whoops, where, where have we gone? You'd need something, some MX. Come on! That's better. So that's what I've got in terms of my dyes. Haven't really got that many. You know, you see, although I have, haven't I? Considering how much I dye, I have actually got quite a few. And then we used to have a printer that you could fill the ink up with, and I kept all of the syringes and these are great if you want to shoot dye into certain parts of your of your yarn they're brilliant for that um 10 mill milliliter ones and they give you good accurate measures of how much you're using as well and the little pipettes they're out the kids signs kit they're quite good fun and then i've got the oxo thing that i bought off amazon that you've already seen which is just amazing absolutely brilliant it's my most favorite thing ever i love the way it gives you heavy speckling it's fab and cutlery that we don't use near food and then these great big syringes and the um the pointy tips from these little ones fit on the end of here as well so if you want to have a bit more in your whatever you've got it and sometimes as well as using the hob i'll use a camping stone so it's camping store so we've got gas but obviously that's also handy for when the zombie apocalypse hits so we won't be short and there's a camping stone on top of the fridge Nicely organised, not a fire hazard at all. No, it's fine. Um, and that is it. That is the, uh, yeah. People have dye studios and dye dungeons. I have a shelf. There you go. And there's the hob. Bubbling away, you can you hear it? Bubble, bubble, bubble. And let's have a look. Let's see what's happened. Ooh. Yeah, that's looking good. There's still some dye that hasn't dissolved in there, so I'll have to leave that on for a while. 